What is one thing you want to do before you die? Befriend a crow and trade snacks for shiny things. Befriend a Polish cow. It will trade you cocaine for money. Tioko Jedno W Glowy Man. I just want to be happy with my life. I'm almost there. Been crawling out of a dark place for the last six years. Finally got off medicine last year. Being happy is often seen as such a cop-out kind of answer to this sort of question. But as a person who's also seen those dark, dark times, I want to let you know that's 100%, a valid goal and I am incredibly proud of you for going for it. I believe in you and I know you can do it. I want to through hike the Appalachian Trail. Hey this is what I came to say. I've started my journey, kind of. I just bought damn near all the gear to just get into backpacking and I'm going to go as much as possible throughout 2021 to practice and hone my packing list for the trail and then try for it in 2022. You got this. Go go go. What kind of things does one need to buy to prep for a journey like that? It's more about getting the six months off and having the willpower than it is the gear. A grandmother has done it with a military surplus duffel bag and a shower curtain for a tent. Research ultralight, lightweight backpacking. The White Blaze website is full of good advice. You can break the bank if you are a gear hound, or you can buy used and make reasonable compromises. If you go to retailer with your wallet open, you can absolutely be burdened with a fat bill and 60 pounds of gear. Aim for 30 pounds or fewer including water. Odds of enjoyment go through the roof with less on your back. Go to the town my grandfather was from. He died way before I was born so I only know about him through stories. I'm told I look a lot like him. I read that as go to town on my grandfather. Thank heavens I reread it. Jury duty. I don't know why. Just intrigued by it. Ha. Huh. I did that when I was 19 for a one-week trial. It was about driving under the influence of prescription drugs. Interesting process and not something I'll forget. It's funny, we actually DID do a 12 angry men thing. We took a blind vote and one person thought the lady was not guilty, everyone else voted guilty immediately, without discussion. So we discussed for an hour or so and at the end the person who initially voted not guilty said that he would have voted guilty, but wanted to force us to at least discuss the possibility of her being innocent. Wow, that is so nice. So what were some of the arguments if you still remember? That is how I wish all proceedings would go, to give the person a real chance. Because if we were really just we would need to think about this stuff. It is a human's life in the hand of the jury, which is no joke. Ah. Uh, it was quite a long time ago and I no longer remember all the specifics. The woman had a small dog and she claimed that the dog distracted her, which is why she was swerving all over the road. She brought character witnesses who were, unfortunately, not very persuasive, one was a shopkeeper who barely remembered her coming in that day at all, another was a neighbor who simply said that she was a nice old lady. There was a third, but I don't remember who it was. On the other hand, we had toxicology reports, the police witness who had responded to the 911 call, and the fact that she had taken much more of her prescription drug that day than she was supposed to. Edit to say, the experience did change my thinking. If I'm ever on a jury again, I'll probably do the same thing. Ask for a blind vote in the beginning and at least force a discussion between the members of the jury. It was valuable to talk it all through. Nice, it is important to have an open mind and not be set on an opinion. That goes for life in general but especially when someone's life is on the line. Thanks for your service and I will take your experience into account when I will be able to attend my jury duty after I become a citizen. Oh yeah. I just remembered one more detail, we asked the man who voted not guilty why he did that, and he said that he was once in a different trial where the whole jury immediately voted guilty and then sat there and discussed their weekend plans for a while. He deeply regretted the fact that they never talked about it and never gave that person a chance. Maybe it could have turned out differently. I hope you become a citizen one day. Just wanted to recommend an awesome movie, 12 Angry Men, hope you can watch it and enjoy it. Web link. Thanks. This has been on my list for a while, I will definitely get to it now. I watched that in my criminal justice class in high school and everyone fell asleep but I love it. So good. 
I want to spend a night under the Aurora Borealis. It will happen someday. I like when I see comments like yours. I think people that live in my town sometimes take it for granted. I've seen the Northern Lights hundreds of times and I try to look at it through little boy version of myself every time. Because when I do, it really amazes me every time. So thank you. I'll think about this comment next time I'm looking up watching them dance. Edit. A couple of people asked for pictures. I'm not much of a photographer but some local photographer types took these just outside of town. I don't think? Need to give credit as they watermark all their photos. Here's a news article I found about S local photographer. Lots of photos in the article. This is a video a couple made when they drove up here. They got to see a particularly good show on their drive. They show all their pictures at about 3 o'clock, YouTube link, web link. I've lived in Alaska for almost two years now and we've gotten the Aurora multiple times and I still haven't gotten a chance to see it. I remember setting a reminder one night to go out and look at it but I ended up giving birth to my son instead laughing out loud. Your son was born under the northern lights? That's magical. Go to see more Skinner's Kitchen. At this time of year? At this time of day, in this part of the country, localized entirely within your kitchen? Yes. May I see it? I hope you're prepared for an unforgettable luncheon. Depending on where you live, it might not be as expensive as you think to fly to Fairbanks for a couple weeks in late winter or early spring. I spent a few months there for work a few years ago. Arrived in early April, saw the auroras almost every night for my first couple weeks there. Come to Canada. I grew up in the northern Canada and would see them every other year. Truly magical experience. Does it matter where in northern Canada? Pretty big plot of land you have up there. Edit, okay, so I did some digging and it looks like, I guess unsurprisingly, the optimal place slash time to see them is in Canada. Yellowknife is the capital, and only real city, and they have a place called Aurora Village that is set up specifically for viewing the northern lights. It seems like you can see them really all over Canada, although they warn that the coastal provinces, Quebec, BC, aren't ideal because of potential cloud cover. Web link. Marry my best friend. I also choose this guy's best friend. Our wife. In the middle of the street. I want to see the pyramids in Egypt among other destinations. I went to go visit the pyramids in Cairo, what an amazing three days. It's truly another world there. People were friendly and interested to meet you. Walking the back streets of Cairo at night, discovering tasty street food outlets and playing street football with the local kids. That's an all-time life highlight of mine right there, and I did it alone. Highly recommended. Are you male? I've heard Cairo is difficult for females. Especially alone. E, thanks for all your responses. Safe to say I pretty much hate everything you all said. It makes me sad. I am indeed male. I'm also half Indian so I have olive skin slash dark hair so I didn't stick out like a sore thumb. I have an Insta friend I met on my travels who visited Egypt with a friend and had a great time however she did recall a guy brazenly beating one off whilst staring at her in broad daylight, apparently nobody batted an eyelid. I'd advise traveling with an international tour group and staying in the main areas, not walking alone around Cairo with female. This sucks to even type out. Skeptical. Seems like every woman has had an almost identical experience which is so sickening, I went when I was younger and was groped, almost locked in a shop and forced to buy souvenir crap, stared at, cat called, made to ride a camel and surrounded with men demanding we pay them, right outside our hotel may I add, and even a male staff member at the hotel told my dad he was a lucky man and assumed he was married to me, a 10 to 11 year old girl. It's such a shame because it's so beautiful but ruined by disgusting predatory men, nothing amazed me more than the fish and coral reefs but it's so unfortunate that the memory was tainted. Same experience but Turkey. Lone female traveler but I was the tour guide and said men were outright feeling my bottom, giving chase quite literally through the streets. A returning Australian service man in the group from Afghanistan helped me out but it was a pretty full-on experience. Never forget the 40 or so men that gradually encroached on me in a cafe because I had the audacity to order a coffee and light a cigarette. 
had a cheeky last laugh though the itinerary called for a visit to a rug store, as I was directing and guiding the group to a waiting bus this guy starts hounding us to buy a small rug. He kept thrusting it in everyone's arms slash faces as we ran and piled in the bus. As a manipulative last ditch attempt to entrap someone into buying the carpet he frisbees it through the closing door of the bus, then starts jumping up and down to some conveniently located police, crying theft. We were moving by that point, so I opened the doors and frisbeed that MF rug right back in his face. The look of outrage was priceless. Back on topic plus, wouldn't expect Egypt to be any different but so worth it, I'd imagine. Visiting Egypt as a female is rough. Even the police who are supposed to protect you are constantly touching you inappropriately given half a chance. At least that was my experience. Also the constant trying to sell you something or getting money from you can be off-putting. Trying to enjoy the view of the pyramids and not being able to because men are trying to touch you or scam you is so annoying. A close friend, also female, had the exact same experience in Egypt, plus men pretending to be police trying to confiscate their passports, and advised that I do not go. These are all so lovely. All I really want to do is clean up my apartment. Even in death, I bet I'd still be embarrassed of the clutter edit, whoa. What an outpouring of kindness. I'm almost embarrassed by it. A semi-sarcastic comment has somehow revealed so much. The kernel of truth in every joke, or something like that. I'm that old lady surrounded by 50 years of newspapers and cat droppings messy, but I sure do have a whole bunch of stuff and, yes, it is overwhelming. I thank you for your suggestions and gentle words of support. I'd like to stay gracious about the awards, so thank you. Please do consider donating to a local group or neighbor instead. A lot of people are having a hard time right now. I'm grateful that I'm not one. Please bear with me as it will take some time to respond to your kind personal messages. Thank you. Start small. Pick one countertop or section of the floor. Another way is to fill a bag a day to throw away. Either a grocery bag or a trash bag. Could be actual trash or donations. You can do this. One small thing at a time, you'll start to feel better as your space gets picked up. I know how overwhelming it can be and downright depressing when you don't know where to start. Go to space and look down at the Earth. I have been wanting to visit the ISS ever since reading a few astronaut memoirs earlier this year. It'll never happen though. Not unless I win the Powerball in the next few years. Guess I'll have to settle for publishing the book I wrote. Edit. A lot of you are asking about which memoirs I'd recommend, and it's too much to reply to every single comment, I was not expecting this to blow up like it did, so I'll say it here, Scott Kelly's endurance is far and away the best, but Chris Hadfield's book is great, too. I'm sure there are more I haven't gotten to yet. Also, about that book since that's getting asked about a lot too, it's about four fifth graders who meet at recess. They're all dealing with their own issues and write about them in their journals, it's told in journal entries. They learn to come together eventually and there's a bit of a mystery a little later in the story. Reading Chris Hadfield's book actually tempered some of my desire to go to the ISS. Having the blood pool in your head, using a space toilet, losing the calluses on your feet. Don't get me wrong I still want to go. Just not for very long until we get artificial gravity figured out. Apparently your vision also deteriorates over time in space. That's the biggest no-no for me. Yep. Without the magnetosphere you can also sometimes see flashes when a cosmic ray strikes your optic nerve. The main issue with loss of eyesight has to do with decreased blood flow and oxygen to the ocular tissue. And there are many other negative health effects. Ever since astronauts began going to space for extended periods of time, it has been known that long-term exposure to zero gravity or microgravity comes with its share of health effects. These include muscle atrophy and loss of bone density, but also extend to other areas of the body leading to diminished organ function, circulation, and even genetic changes. And I feel like I remember something about lack of gravity affecting eye shape? I might be completely wrong about that though. Be actually happy. I don't mean that in a pity party way. I'm just an angry and anxious person but I'm getting better each day. Edit. I usually hate when people do this but thanks for all the awesome responses and awards. It's things like this that keep me towards my goal of not letting my anger control me. I have made plans to get back with a therapist and hopefully get back on the right meds. Thanks again kind strangers. 
I used to want that same happiness, and I was often bitter and anxious towards the world. What helped was learning that happiness is an outside force, as the Dalai Lama describes it, like a butterfly that lands on you, and then flutters away. Focusing on finding joy in life has helped me become a much better person, though I certainly can improve. The difference between joy and happiness is that joy can be found in the most normal or even hard lives, as it is a purposeful look at all the blessings and beauty around you. Earlier in this thread someone said that many in their town take the northern lights for granted, yet for many that is their one thing they want to see before they die. How many in that village are bitterly seeking happiness, yet such wonderful joy happens around them so often. Thinking outside yourself helps too. It helps to remember that there are others that have it much worse than you, and to take into account what good and joy there is around you. Then, doing what you can further that joy. While there are many writings of philosophy around these thoughts, I recommend the book of joy as it is very approachable and helped me through some bad times. To fall in love with someone who loves me at the same time. I've never had that, I've never been in love with someone while they were in love with me and when I was I didn't have the courage to do anything about it. I've always missed my window, and I don't want to miss it again. I'm scared as hell but I'll best my heart and soul for it I have too. I want this so badly too. I've never been in any relationship of any kind. Being loved must be one hell of a drug we'll get there. We'll get there. It really is one hell of a drug. And if it's toxic love, you will definitely act and feel like a drug addict. No. This might be stupid, but I really want to make good on my childhood dream of becoming a game developer, or at least voice actor in a video game. Edit, holy sheesh. Thank you for all the love, Reddit. My first silver too. Y'all are so sweet. Thank you all for helping me realize my dream, I'll make you all proud, I promise. Game Dev here, will need voice acting for children's game January 2021. PM if you want in, thumbs up, edit, did. Nat. Expect. That. Wow. Love the enthusiasm. I'm going to try to reply to everybody sometime in December. Currently looking for English and Norwegian speakers, hopefully more at a later date. Thank you for watching. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube. And share them with your friends. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. We welcome your comments below. Another of our videos will begin shortly.